Hi, I'm Margaret Hammerstrom, the Christian Science Chaplain here at Harvard. I don't think I ever thought I would ever say those words, <laughs> because when I was in college, I didn't think I was going to be a chaplain. I went to college as a music major. Starting from when I was six years old, I started playing the piano all through summer, all through my middle school years and high school years, and then I decided to go to college at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, where I got my degree in piano performance. Now, the last couple of years that I was in college, I actually specialized more in accompanying. I enjoyed making music with other musicians. I accompanied instrumentalists, string players, but I most appreciated accompanying singers. After I got my degree at Northwestern, I had the wonderful privilege of spending two years in Paris. I had your typical American in Paris experience. After two years in Paris, I decided that I wanted to pursue the vocal accompaniment, and I came back to Boston to go to the New England Conservatory for a master's degree in vocal accompaniment. Now, I was accepted to the program, but I had to wait maybe six months before I could actually audition for them. And so I thought, well, I'll build up my music, musical contacts, and then I will audition for this program and go forward. Well, I've been a Christian scientist all my life, a fourth generation Christian scientist, and the world headquarters of the Christian Science Church are here in Boston. So I went over to the Christian Science Publishing Society that publishes the Christian Science Monitor and uh, asked them if they needed part-time help. I just wanted a part-time job so that I could use the afternoons uh, to build up my musical contacts and prepare for this audition. Well, they hired me for the translations department. Well, then it came to um, a crossroads in my career because as the audition became closer, I began feeling I wasn't quite sure that I wanted to get back into academia again. But I went ahead and did the audition, and I was accepted. I was actually one of the only 10 people that auditioned for the program that was accepted to the program. But I deferred my admittance to New England Conservatory because I wasn't quite sure that I was ready after the two years of just freedom, just, just playing the piano in Paris. I wasn't sure that I wanted to do course, coursework. So the translation department was interested in having me go full time. And since I wasn't sure of what I wanted to do, it was more a decision not to do something than it was the decision to do something instead of the piano. But I w decided to work full time. Uh, for the translation department, and I kept up my performance in music, but I didn't go back to school. Well, I ended up working in several offices for the world headquarters of the Christian Science Church, and the last few years I was there, I worked for the office that has contact with all of the branch churches around the world. And that's where I began to awaken to my desire to help other people and to use what I understood about my practice of my religion to help other people solve their problems. I was basically working with people in churches all over the world, helping them resolve their collective challenges. But I made some really good individual contacts with people. And um, after I had done that for a while, I began getting calls from individuals in the Boston area, people who just wanted me to pray for them and to work with them to help them solve their problems. And I liked doing that. It was a, a very rewarding. And it actually transferred some of the skills that I had learned as a pianist. Discipline, the ability to work on your own, um, to work with other people, all of those things I feel that my music training helped me to get here. I'm available as a Christian scientist and a Christian science chaplain as a resource to my fellow colleagues uh, on the Harvard chaplains to any question that might come up about Christian science uh, in the Harvard University uh, arena. I also work with Christian science students on the campus. They hold weekly meetings. I'm just there to help people. Often I get referrals for people to come to my office. It's just across from Harvard Yard at 5 John F. Kennedy Street. If you know the Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe office, they have their administrative offices in that same building. And I have interfaced with students who are doing research papers in 
uh, subjects like comparative religions or sociology or psychology, sometimes women's studies. They want to come and learn more about Mary Baker Eddy, who is the discoverer and founder of Christian Science, the founder of the Christian Science Church, who in her late 80s founded an international daily newspaper, the Christian Science Monitor. Most people who come to me and talk to me about Christian Science uh, know about the Christian Science Monitor. And the other thing that they know about Christian Science is that we don't use traditional medicine for health care. So often I am explaining to people why prayer is the first option for a Christian scientist. We are a deeply Christian religion and our followers of Jesus and the try to imbibe the character and practice of Jesus as summarized in the Sermon on the Mount in the Bible. We feel that what enabled him to do what he did, to heal almost any single problem you can think of, was uh, based on his understanding of his oneness with God and also that there are spiritual laws that were applicable to the resolution of challenges that are the same laws that are applicable to us today. And so as a Christian scientist, I study these laws. I read the Bible and Mary Baker Reddy also wrote a companion book to the Bible, which is called the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. And through these books, I am deepening my understanding of these spiritual laws and helping to work with people to apply them.